91.3 Capital FM. This is the Capital Gang, brought to you by Bell Lager. Uh, with uh, my name is Rob Kabushenga, your host this morning. With uh, the usual, the main man, Charles Onyangobo, editor of the Monitor. Today he's changed completely. Uh, blue T-shirt, blue jeans, and uh, travelers hat. Charles, are you tracing the explorer's route? I'm traveling. I'm going to explore. <laughs> yeah. Charles, where are you going? <laughs> I'm going east. <laughs> You're going home, right? Franka to see me, uh, our own version of uh, Tiger Woods. You saw him getting his doctorate uh, from his uh, mother's home on TV. You're always wishing to you'd, you'd had the same amount of money. Frank, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. And in the studio today, uh, I, w I want to introduce the other guest just yet. Uh, because today, is, uh, finally, he's found his way here. We've been waiting for the last three weeks. Uh, the man himself, the man who's been causing uh, not just ripples, but uh, tidal waves on the political scene. Retired Colonel, Dr. Kiza Besije himself. Uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you, white shirt. Uh, what, what kind of buttons are those, Doctor? <laughs> Typical Mandela uh, <laughs> outfits. Look, tr trying to look every inch uh, a presidential aspirant. Doctor, <laughs> you're very welcome. Thank you, Rob. Uh, I still have a fault with you. I mean, you chose of all days the day I was getting married to make the announcement, and somehow you managed to dodge the wedding. Where were you? And I must uh, <laughs> tender my apologies once again. <laughs> As you know, it was not my intention. <laughs> well, well, well. We don't know whose intention it was, but uh, Doctor, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And walking in, uh, I don't know whether he's turning it into a habit. But uh, walking in late, somebody I, saw, I met last night. You never told. <laughs> <laughs> the Honorable Eli Karuhanga, MP Nyabushozi County, a man who's been in Parliament for as, as long as I have a political memory. Eli, you're very welcome. Uh, you. I'll tell you, the man is in a, a green Ghanaian shirt. Uh, Eli, Eli, you know, Eli has been voted about three or four times one of the best dressed MPs. Uh, so we hope you'll carry that into your retirement when you're gone. Right. Um, he's still with Stella, so she's the one who is responsible. Are you saying Ellie has nothing to do with this? Well, that no. means he would like to be remembered for something else <laughs> other than he's the best dresser. No, no, no. He won't no, no. be known for his contribution. No, I, I, I don't. <laughs> <guy he does. laughs> no, I don't think you can take that away from Ellie. I'm sure everybody remembers uh, his contributions to the debate. But uh, let me just, uh, let, let's dive into the, the debate this morning. Um, a lot of developments have been happening in the last few weeks. I mean, we, we, we had a uh, doctor announcing his presidency, campaigns starting before they were scheduled to start. Mm -hmm. Then we had uh, government relenting on the political organization's bill. There was uh, a movement meeting. The movement uh, com the National Executive Committee was rescheduled and brought forward. Uh, now we have, uh, then we had uh, a reshuffle in the army. Uh, things changed. Some people moved up and north. Others uh, moved on to bigger offices and uh, some moved aside. Then, you know, we had, uh, now we have this, the, the nomination of the Chief Justice. And now, the Honorable Moses Ali has said there's a ban on government campaigning. Um, Charles. Let me start with you. We come from the same industry, so it's safer that way. Well, what's going on here? <laughs> I don't know. It's it, 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 uh, the... Um, I think in f 14, 15 years of the movement, this is uh, this, this last uh, three weeks, particularly this, this week, has certainly, been, um, has certainly been the most exciting. But, but, but if you look at what has happened, there are a, a series <coughs> of... Um, very troubling thing, and the one that actually troubled me most was was what I saw in um, in a new vision this morning. Uh, Moses Ali is reading the Riot Act. is basically saying that uh, that presidential candidates can't uh, campaign, and I think there are actually no campaign as such. But they are basically they're saying you can't go around showing yourself, and and. Um, my own sense when this 
this development started when Dr. Besiki got involved in this and then you know war came and all this. I think a lot of people <coughs> are looking to see which direction will this go. And my own view had always been that I think the one the winning formula for the movement and President Museveni is to to liberalize, to be seen basically to get back on a reform agenda because that's what would give them something new. But there was also the danger that they would re respond typically, like, an, you know, and, uh, you are strong, <coughs> strong man, African government. And from what we are seeing today, uh, I'm beginning to fear that the choice has been made, that the thing is to grow ham-fisted. And, and I basically chuckled at myself because I remember in 96, well, here, 97, the president himself started campaigning six months ahead of the other people. He said it was a poverty eradication campaign, and it was that was fine for him. But now, when the tables have changed and other people are, you know, are show, canvassing and showing themselves around six months ahead of the the vote, they clamp down with this kind of thing. So I think I, it's within the excitement of the last three weeks. I'm now beginning actually to see signs which trouble me that we might actually be going in a direction which is very nasty and unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Frank, I mean, you are, as they say, Frank as ever. Really? What, why, why, why are we walking? I mean, is, is, are people feeling that the presidential ground is being crowded by people rushing in too quickly? I, I, I really don't know what to make of this. Uh, obviously, what um, <coughs> Moses Sali is doing is... Um, is trying, I don't know, I think it's trying to say that you can put a toothpaste back into the tube. Let's leave the parables. I, I, I mean, he, 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 if, if, you, if you have ever tried it, yeah. <laughs> you know how difficult it is, and I wish him luck. Yeah. I'm honorable. I think, I, I, I think, um, I mean, is it fair anyway? No, I think that Moses Ali is doing his job. He's, uh, he's saying that um, if mm. uh, Dr. Chiza BCJ mm. here goes to organize a rally, he should be, the police should be informed so that they can go and uh, keep peace. If he just does it and people start fighting around. I heard some two people have died in uh, Rukunjiri already over a fight. But if there is a rally which the police is not aware of, mm. then you really have mayhem. I don't know whether he's saying that there should be no political campaigns. No, but the question therefore remains. And I actually I haven't read the article this morning, as you know, you just informed me about this, yeah. this debate. Right, Doctor, I mean, you've been, uh, we've been waiting for you here for the last two weeks. Uh, the question therefore is, first of all, let's even start with the immediate problem. I mean, w what is this that Moses Ali is talking about? You see, Rob, um, the list surprised that the party is really evolving. The, this whole problem has been coming, you know, for the last several years. The point of moving away from fairness, from fair play, from democratic pro principles, we've been in it and we've been talking about it. And this is just now moving into the climax of that process. What we are seeing now is what has been developing, making sure there is no fair play, making sure the ground is not even. As you know, Charles, it's not six months to the elections. It's three months to the elections. Mm. But within the n next three months, because the elections must happen by the beginning of March. Mm. And so basically we have December, January, and February. And that's n about 90 days, call them 100 days. We have 56 districts now in Uganda. So basically, even if the campaign had opened today in earnest, one would have less than two days per district. Now, we are still at a stage where we have no electoral law, in spite of the fact that since the 1995 constitution, it was known that a, a presidential election would be held in the year 2001. It was known that a law would be required, but we are 90 days from the election and there is no law in place.
um, we we still don't have a voters uh, register in place. I'm hearing just now that there is there are plans for the electoral commission to import machinery to take pictures of all voters and issue them with the voters cards with their pictures. I mean, a lot of nonsense because that cannot be done within the remaining period. <coughs> and you expect that uh, there will be time for campaigning and there will be time for this and that. So basically what we have is a deliberate attempt mm. by the executive. Mm. And in this case, I think the president himself mm. to have an unfair play to ensure that there is no fair competition. I think this is basically, simply put, a fear of fair competition. And uh, this is uh, simply what is being used. So I'm not surprised by the statement of, uh, of, of, uh, of Brigadier Moses Ali. You know that to be nominated a candidate, one requires the support of at least 100 registered voters from at least two-thirds of the districts of Uganda. Now, if aspiring candidates do not move around the districts and hold consultations, how, <laughs> by any chance, can they get their 100 voters from two-thirds of Ugandan districts is this to support is this 100, them? 100 voters from each of the... Yes, 100 voters from each district mm. coming from Two-thirds of all Ugandan districts must support you, must support you and your, your nomination in order for you to become a candidate. Mm -hmm. Registered voters, you have to ensure that they are registered voters. Mm -hmm. Now, this can only be done through a pre-nomination consultation exercise. But what they are basically saying is that this should not go on. Meetings should, uh, should not be allowed. The police permission should be sought in order to have a meeting somewhere in a restaurant with people who can do this groundwork for you. I mean, this is just fear of fair competition. That's all. Honorable, you're shaking your head, I mean. Yeah, but I, th I think that this is um, kind of explaining what Moses Ali has said mm. a little bit too far. Mm. I think what he is saying, really, is saying there must be law and order in the country. Mm. We are exposing ourselves to campaigns. You know what happens during elections? in many African countries. So many people lose their lives in these debates. And I don't think that is, would be responsible for any minister of internal affairs to allow a situation like that. But there is a law but, but, which but, says, no, the, the, let me just, there is a law which says that if you are going to organize a rally, please let the police know so that they can be able to provide security. Meetings, like the uh, Dr. Kano is saying, for consultations, cannot be challenged by Moses Ali. If yes, yes meeting, but, but Ali held meetings but, in the speak hotel. Or, or, but Ali, the, the, the effect of his statement is precisely to do that. Because who, who, has, is who, who, who has been holding rallies? Have I held any rally? If, if I have not held any rally. If he's saying but let, me, let me just point this out. I mean, the police and the question of permission has a record in this country over the last how many years? of using that permission to actually prevent people from holding political meetings. So why should anyone think that the intention now is follow and order? No, I, I don't know. I think that during the elections, you have seen <coughs> what has happened, for example, recently in, mm. in Zanzibar. Yeah. You've seen what's been going on in all these elections. There is not, in India, how many people die during elections? Mm. But I don't think that Moses Ali is saying that there should, Dr. Vesica should not hold consultative meetings, must not move around, and and that he will deny the permission. He's not saying that he will even deny the permission. You see, earlier I, I, I would be grateful if only Moses Sadi, therefore, yes, yes. also made a positive statement that aspiring candidates are allowed to hold consultative meetings. Let him say so, that they are allowed to hold consultative meetings. Law. Yes, but what he's saying, you yeah. see, is now open to the quiet interpretation of, of or quiet orders. We must correct the policemen. <laughs> he should come out <laughs> forthright and say they are allowed, and in fact they must hold pre-nomination consultative meetings so that it is clear to everybody. Yeah. Uh, we, Uganda's history is littered with all these uh, regulations aimed at what they call public safety. Even the Public Safety Act, as you know, was intended to, pro 
to protect the public. Well, you are the Minister of Internal Affairs. But, was, but was, 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 uh, do we know the Public Safety Act to be a, a law that was pro-public? So but, they are not but, trying to protect the public. You know, my own sense about this is, let us talk very specifically about the history. Mm -hmm. That, you see, I mean, the reason why I worry is we <coughs> already have a situation where a small group of multipartists, I remember the Maos you know, when they went to Tororo, when they went to Nkosi, in a university place, they were hounded by the police and beaten out. So, you see, this police... And this government actually doesn't have a very liberal record on that issue. Charles, yesterday and there was a debate in my case no, where the doctor was. Yeah, no. <laughs> Look, the, in 96, Sir Mogherini, as a candidate, a declared candidate, he was beaten by movement goons and policemen. Where? In, in Kamaide and some other place there, you know, somewhere near Mbarara. Mm. So you see... In fact, even in Okundi. <laughs> yeah, even in Okundi, <laughs> this doctor's place. <laughs> so, the record, the record the of the police in this government, in Obata's government, historically in this country, has not been liberal. That this thing, when they come out during election time, they are designed to muzzle, not to ensure safety. And, and anyway, first to be uncharitable. That would be unfortunate. First to be uncharitable to Honorable Moses Ali. I mean, he's he's been part of an extremely dictatorial <laughs> government before. <laughs> I don't see why we should trust him. But <laughs> <laughs> well, but anyway, let me just. I mean, Charles, it's yeah. first to stay with you. That's below the belt. No, but this is history. I mean, it's 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 a fact. But let me stay with you, Charles. I mean, so why can you give us a sense of why the movement National Executive Committee was brought forward? I mean, what was the urgency here? No, 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 no. I am, uh, you know, I am the sideline observer. You see, there were actually two. There were actually two things which are very interesting. You see that. I just think that from a, a tactical point of view, it seemed to be inevitable that some statement should be made to indicate that um, there was some, there was going to be some freeing of the parties. At least, you know, in the language, some language to that effect. I'm still not, uh, you know, from looking at what they say, there is obvious, there's obvious and not much on the substance. But, but my own sense is what is happening, that as the movement uh, uh, conference in years, we have these statements and these proposals being made that parties will be free to field candidates, which is fine, but then don't do so on individual merit, which is ridiculous. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but then, my own reading of this is that then the argument is going to be made that if the parties <coughs> are going to field candidates, then they are for the movement <coughs> to function efficiently against them it must respond in the same way. That it must also feel one candidate. And I think that, you know, I'm not exactly sure that that is what is happening, what's going to happen. But if you read the papers, already, you know, uh, we have statements of districts, of councils, voting, by the way, meeting and voting on the choice of their movement candidates. And again, you know, we've seen these things in the past. And I think that that is what's going to happen. So my friend, uh, Dr. Vesiji, they will tell him, our worry is on his thing, you know, um, the movement, the Museveni's candidate. Now, where is your organization? You forward yourself <laughs> as a candidate. <laughs> yeah, over, over, over to you, Dr. Nimi. Where, where are you? You see, uh, Charles is, uh, is right in um, observing that the leadership of the movement. I mean, the president was forthright when he responded to my candidature by saying that it was indisciplined because the movement organs had not endorsed it. And um, uh, the, uh, the activities which are taking place right now throughout the whole country are indeed in that uh, line of making sure that the district leaders, mm. the movement uh, chairpersons at the various levels are all whipped up in 
it's it's very very you know uh, surprising how really in Uganda we forget our history because this is very very reminiscent of the activities of the 60s when uh, party conferences were being organized mm -hmm. and uh, uh, candidates orchestrated to lead those parties mm -hmm. uh, especially the, the, the UPC as, as we know mm -hmm. this which we, we were criticizing which was the basis of our struggle is exactly where we are heading right now wanting to behave like a one-party state wanting that um, you know the, this whole thing because uh, 30 odd people fought a meeting in a district at the invitation of the movement chairperson uh, having been visited the night before and uh, drilled into what to do then they come into a meeting and then they unanimously or almost unanimously take a decision <laughs> that so and so is their candidate and then they move on to the other organs this is precisely what was. but at least then there was a party but now even without saying there is a party the actions are exactly the same as what was happening in the one party state of the 60s which is forbidden by the constitution mm. but <coughs> what 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 is really um, uh, extremely disturbing mm. is that you find you know eloquent people like Konari Bokaruanga who know the law mm. who know the constitution in fact i got what have i said I, I, <laughs> no i'm i'm saying eloquent people like you I, 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 I'm, I'm yet to hear what you are going to say <laughs> yeah. but people who know the law people mm. who know the constitution i received a letter from a district movement chairperson a prominent movement uh, chairperson who said you know kanobesije uh, really, we all know the law, but we should all be strategic. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? The, the law should. Uh, he explained. He explained mm. that I, I think I'll get your copy. You know, it is interesting to read mm. what the, the, the minds of, of leaders are. Uh, 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 he was distinguishing legal. Yes, he was, say, he, was saying, <laughs> he was saying, you know, even if the law says that, mm. for heaven's sake, forget about what the law says. Mm. You know, the reality of the matter is that we are in this quietly struggling as a political organization. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess this, this, this is a political organization. Well, I, 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 I didn't know that. Didn't this know is that. the first admission I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> what I knew was that the movement was a political it system. Is, it is in the law, it was stated that the movement uh -huh. is a political system. I'll get, I'll get to you, Honorable. I'll get to you. No, no, no. Even, 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 even the organs which they say are organs of the movement, they are not organs of the movement and and that and that i think people should know that it was not by an omission or by an error <coughs> in 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 writing in the constitution the national executive committee and the movement conference are organs under the movement political system they are not organs of the movement <laughs> no, they, 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 they are, because you cannot have organs mm. of the system. Mm. You, you, organs would otherwise be of an organization indeed. <laughs> no, they, 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 so we created this amorphous uh, structure uh, and, and uh, situation in the, in the, in the, in the constitution, constitution, which we are now uh, you know, battling with and which is tying all these people's hands and they are reeling in, in the mess that they created themselves. We told them in the constituent <coughs> assembly. So that's the problem. 91.3 Capital FM, this is the Capital Gang brought to you by Bell Lager, <coughs> Charles Wongo Bo, Frank Atusine, Honorable Eric Alhanga, and uh, retired Colonel Dr. Kizo Besiji. Now, uh, Charles, I got this uh, interesting wedding gift. It's a CD, okay, mm -hmm. from my boss, William Pike. But it's uh, Winton Marsalis. Yeah. Now, he, he, I'm, uh, no, no, this is the you best. Time it's, time. it's time, <laughs> but it's a, it's a trumpet. He, he is it's a rendition of a 16th century track, which was also done 
by uh, a rap artist whose uh, song I'll play at the end. So uh, yeah. you sound so professional. No, we, these things we take time off your your <laughs> politics <laughs> to, to, to relax. So let, let let's take a listen to Winton Marsalis. Promotion: Win sofa sets, color TVs, carpets, fridges, beds, wall units, cookers, and lots more. The grand draw will be a full set of luxury furniture for your home from Musicraft. Just buy a copy of the New Vision, Sunday Vision, Buke Day or Buke Deku Sunday to join the 10 weekly draws. The winner takes it home only in the New Vision, Uganda's leading daily.
such a game! I can't wait to get to town! Me too, I'm so excited about this concert! Ah, the driver stopped! Let's go get some Coca-Cola! Okay! Ladies, your bus is leaving! We'll catch the next bus. Coca-Cola Enjoy! Hey, Louie! Have you seen the new look Super Doom can? Yeah, Mark! I'm going to buzz around it for a closer look! Okay, Louie! I'll stay here and guide your rubbish bin! <gasps> wow! It's a mean-looking killing machine! With one of them fancy new spray-throw safety caps! That's bad news for our students! Yes! They've called it Super Dome Fast Kill! What's that mean, Louie? That means, if we're not out of here fast, we'll be killed! Super Dome Fast Kill, with the new spray-throw safety cap, kills cleanly, more efficiently! Louie! You got me! Deadly Doom protects! The Financial Training College is offering you an opportunity to be trained in SECA, CAT, CIMA, ICSA, UDBS, CPA Kenya, CPA Uganda, and Certified Diploma in Accounting and Finance. If you take SECA, you are eligible for a BSc degree in Applied Accounting from Oxford Brookes University in the UK. Registration ends 20th December at the Financial Training College. Plot 50, Stockton City, William Street, near Hotel Victoria. Telephone number 346 278. Join the Financial Training College. You can tell who drinks bell. And you know this is the Capital Gang, brought to you by Uganda's finest premium beer, Bell Lager. That's right, this is the Capital Gang brought to you by Bell Lager, the finest premium beer in the land, with uh, Charles Mungobo, editor of the Monitor, Frank Tusime, computer expert and social critic, Honorable Eli Karahanga, MP for Nyabushozi County, he's been there 14 years, uh, retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Besije, a man who wants to become tenant of State House Nakasero. And uh, my name is Rob Kabushenga, I'm your host this morning. Uh, Frank, I mean, this week also saw, finally, the movement caucus deciding to open up uh, the political space to a certain extent by allowing the political organizations bill but as we're discussing during the break there seems to be a lot of uh, confusion i mean what what the hell is going on there oh, no, let me first congratulate <coughs> you for your uh, fine sense of music this particular but piece was fantastic i mean it's i told you it's <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's it's really up the building <laughs> <laughs> but, but let me, um, y you know, <coughs> this political, uh, the political parties organizations bill is, in my view, something that I personally would have liked to see about two years ago. Because remember when we talked about this, my my own um, analysis of, of 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 this country is that. As we try to build this nation, we need to recognize what the social strata is in this country. You, essentially, you have an urban elite who, who is very much, uh, 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 in terms of social political development, is as good as you have people in Florida, for that matter. All right? They have the same aspirations. And then you have the rural elite who also uh, essentially because of their huge huge economic problems really are more concerned about what it rather than other these uh, uh, liberal uh, 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 aspects of life now the key thing is whereas this huge rural majority form a big block and are the majority <coughs> and therefore would inevitably want to continue with a movement system of government. You find that because of their level of uh, education, uh, economic well-being and so on, they cannot even get a leader from amongst themselves. So they will always be led by the people who believe in a more liberal society. Now, you need, we needed to be careful to take into account what 
the rural majority want to have, and two, what their potential leaders would want them to have. And that's why I was saying we should have married the two, allowed, in my view, a long time ago, the kind of thing that the political parties bill wants to say. One, let parties have f as all the freedoms they want, generally in the urban areas, and in my view, up to district level. Then meet the aspirations of the rural who want to get on with their life, to get medicine, to get schools, to get this, all these kinds of things without too much political interference and fighting, mm. but have that in place. Mm. That should have been done two years ago. Now, instead, we stuck very rigidly to what the 1996 constitution, which was passed by the CA, really said, and everybody who, whoever raised this kind of idea that we should open up was read the Riot Act. Really, this red rag of the Constitution was waved in your face. Now, the problem we have is that, and this is something we should have foreseen, the situation we are in now should have been foreseen by the parliamentarians and our political leaders. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the Dr. Reske candidature and the kind of excitement it has generated, the uh, uh, movement caucus and the movement leaders Although even then, by the way, there were some within the movement who shared this uh, this view, but I think they were in a minority. Mm -hmm. Now, suddenly, because of Westgate's candidature, everybody now sees that's the way to go. Unfortunately for us, you see, the parties, by that I mean the old parties, actually don't want this, they don't want the space opened. Because these parties leave off Article 269. They, 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 <laughs> they sing it because they know it's their only legitimacy. It's their only legitimacy. If it goes, all of them will go. They'll be out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why they don't want it. Now, the parties are telling the, 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 the Kalhangas, we don't want your freedom. We never wanted it. Which is what they wanted in the first place. But make matters worse. Mm. To make matters worse, I mean, is that so actually the movement is not getting the credit. Mm. It should have got if it had done this two years ago. Yeah. More, more seriously is that actually if this party's bill mm. is being put in place to enable, for mm. example, the movement to endorse one candidate, mm. we are in for trouble because, because the fact that this is written in the constitution and has been literally uh, 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 sealed by a referendum you are not going you are not going to stop Dr. Kiza Vesige to claim that he is a movement candidate because if you attempt to do that he will go and seek refuge in the constitutional court and we are going to be in a lot of trouble. This is my problem. Eli, I mean you, you are the guys who passed this bill I mean, you, which is helping us collect more revenue. Our problem is the way it is administered Mr. Commissioner General, since you're on the line, with your experience in finance, how could you have taken money which belongs to your organization and put in a private account? Not only that, you had a letter written by one of the internal auditors from the Auditor General's office, which clearly stipulated what he should have done. He told you to open a private account, and op open up a separate account. But you know very well that the financial regulations tell you how to open that account. How did you put it in somebody else's account? We are all very happy about Kano Kaihura because we think he's a man of integrity. But surely, mm, funds which belong to the public have got to be managed in a particular manner per regulations. So why did you bypass financial regulations? Okay, thank you very much for that question. First of all, when we got proper instruction from the minister, we refused to, to uh, immediately act. We wrote back and said, where is this money going? The reply came and specified not only the name, but the account number and the bank. Now, I know government regulations. We added on and said, when we communicated back, we said the, the, the title of the account and the operator will be held personally liable for the expenditure which is not audited by the Auditor General. By the way, we, in order to make this system safer, we did uh, what is unusual. 
I refused to authorize expenditure until the Auditor General had sanctioned it. This is unusual, because the usual system is for the accounting officer to, to sanction the expenditure and the Auditor General come later. But because of the unusual uh, operating uh, uh, you know, uh, requirement, we have taken that route in order to make sure that the public funds are safe. Now, we have now stopped. We have now stopped after the resolution. We have stopped making payments. But uh, as Kano Kairu was saying, these, the payments individually have been audited and sanctioned by the Auditor General. But Mr. Commissioner General, the, yes. the Auditor General doesn't agree with you. According to the Auditor General, what you did was done the wrong way. And this is where we come in and we say, look, you should have followed the regulations which you didn't follow. He doesn't agree with you at no, all. You I had a chance to talk to him yesterday. Oh, yes. he's also uh, in the papers. He's also in the papers. He said he assumed but, that but you were following the regulations of setting up a URA account and that you were giving the money to an official of URA. He uh, believed that the money was going to an official of URA. Okay, I, I agree with where we talked. We talked even uh, when he rang New Vision, we had talked. It is true that probably that account did not follow government regulations. But you see, the, the most important thing, the security there, was that this was the person who drew the money for the purpose of work was held responsible, as it does happen. It happens... I would also like to get that money. No, no. Mm -hmm. But you see, he was... And he came to account later. <laughs> no, you see what was happening, he was incurring the expenditure approved by the Auditor General, then we would pay. So, so you are sure that you have some checks and balances at least? Yes, yeah, but, but, but he was not an official of URA. That's the point I'm making, that I am from Parliament. Okay. Can I come to URA and be given money of URA to account later? No, from a structural point of view, from a principled point of view, uh, somebody who is not accountable to URA okay. is not supposed to be given money. That is a fact. That, Thank is you. that was the point I wanted to make. Okay. But you should, you should also understand the circumstances under which these payments were made. What are those circumstances? Well, the circumstances was that here is an institution which is not yet uh, clear where it is false. It is not legal. It wasn't legally. It legally legal. cost yes. a few yes. times. Yes. 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 It is not legal, but uh, of course that legality has been clarified. Yes. But here is an authority from the, the, the supervisor, the minister himself, saying yes. make money available yes. for this task force perform. Yes. Uh, now, if you if you go to legalistic, sometimes it may be a problem. So oh. then that means the institution has to stop. Now that's disappointing from coming from you. I have so, so much respect for you, you and your belief in structures and the law. No, you should still respect me. Mm. But, but I'm saying that on the ground, sometimes you have to look at the situation as it is. The objective situation, sir. Yes, and answer it. C can I? We, we've actually overshot our timing, but let me let me just uh, put uh, two things to you. Uh, a lot of us are worried that while Kali's institution is a good institution, mm -hmm. that it would create more disaffection in the URA, that would make people more and more disenchanted. But what are you going to do to harmonize, you know, these institutions? I mean, I can see myself coming out of the airport or, or somebody coming out of the airport. He has to go through URA. He has to go through one checking body and a third checking body. But what are you going to do to harmonize all this? Okay, we have begun a series of meetings one of which has commented together with them and UMA so that we can work out a common guideline. Now, that common guideline will be known by all the three, will be known by the business community, will be known by the, the, the uh, RPS, will be known by the customs and the RPS. My ideal situation is that this is a temporary arrangement because, as I said, the systems must be developed so that you don't have outside URA institutions which are duplicating the functions of the institution. Uh, 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 Commissioner General, yes. uh, are you aware that, um, in fact, there, is, there seems to be so much demoralization within URA? I, I, th I suspect part of the reason is this kind of uh, destabilization that actually you... You are now the training ground for a lot of uh, private accounting firms. I mean, people are leaving you are you are good accountants, you are good tax accountants, and uh, you, you, I don't know. You, you must be aware that you are hemorrhaging good professional staff. 
But they say the rumor is that even him, he wants to leave. He doesn't want to renew his contract. <laughs> that he's uh, unhappy about the irregularity there. Yeah. Right. That, that, that is serious. That is serious. I'm hearing. That is serious. Should we take, should we put any credence to um, this rumor? Well, I don't. You know, I don't. Uh, I don't accept rumors until they. You don't comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm being very naughty. Okay. But I've I've just okay. been hearing rumors about you. But are you losing stuff? Now you know. Let me let me say this. Well, you see, human behavior is very interesting. First of all, the way it reacts to strange bodies, uh, and later on, when they are, maybe later on, it can reject or accept. I think that this is a new, this is a new arrangement, and uh, we, we are working quickly to normalize the relations. This is true. It is true that some of the staff feel a little uh, uneasy, and some of the professionals, uh, of course, uh, the professional firms are looking out there. But of course, movements are, are regular. For me, by the way, within the context of the economy entirely, I don't object to good staff moving out to, to other farms. You know why? Because if we can get accounts done professionally, then we will have less problems fighting the taxpayers. Okay, okay. Be before we just round up, and we've got to do the round up, sir. Yeah, um, is it true what we're hearing, that you don't want to renew your contract because you're totally pissed off with all the going on? Well, uh, I don't want to say yes or no. You know, in journalistic terms, no comment means it's true. <laughs> uh, I will renew. <laughs> well, th <laughs> thank you very much indeed, sir. And um, do, do apologize to me, um, the Honorable Minister on my behalf and uh, for causing you to, to, to miss this meeting. But I do appreciate the, your the calling. People, the people, you, the people need that. Thank account. you, sir. Well, gentlemen and ladies, time for the roundup. I've done the usual thing of going too long. I must ask you about your good or bad event of the week. And I must um, start with you, Winnie. Well, my good event is that we managed to, as Parliament, to ask government to legalize th this uh, special unit and to regularize its operations and its recruitment and to bring back money from personal accounts. I'm very happy that we made that resolution, and I hope government will respect it and act on it immediately. My bad event was a report I read in the monitor as I was coming to the studios about uh, uh, comments being made by the chairman of Luero District, a, a gentleman whom I, I, I have a lot of respect for, <laughs> Naduri, <laughs> but who is intimidating Banyankore <laughs> and uh, Banyarwanda in Luero that he's going to throw them out of Luero. He must understand that this constitution says that Uganda belongs to all Ugandans and every Ugandan is free to move anywhere in this country and settle there and do their business there. He says, I want him to know that even this country, the people of this country have lived in it in different places at different times and no one can claim a, a, tribal, a pure tribal homeland. Otherwise, why would you have in Mawogola in Uganda or in Muvende names of places like Keibamba, <laughs> in Tutsi, can you tell me a Uganda word called in Tutsi, <laughs> Rumiaga, Buera, in Luero, where he is, there are places called in Shakazira Gore. <laughs> is that Uganda? Igomero. Is that Uganda? William Shane, Birum, Ben Congo, even Bushara, these are who sit up either in Yankore or in your names of places in Luero. What does that tell him? that that Luero has been inhabited by different people of different tribes and belongs to all the tribes of Uganda. So let him stop <laughs> this intimidation of any particular tribe. That Luero belongs to all of us. Let me go to Frank. Frank, your good or bad event, and I can see you're very upset with it. Um, your good or bad event of the week. Well, the, the, I, I, I was away for, for about a week, and I came back and um, really feeling a bit down you know if you are if you are traveling around western europe and north america the whole of last week all it all, all you saw on tvs from africa was this weird thing and, and it was but the good thing is that i was impressed by the coverage of this story by the western media it was not the usual uh, um, racist or this is some blacks doing their tribal thing it, it you know it was really in-depth coverage and that does go a long way 
to show that you lose nothing by opening up and letting people go and cover the story themselves. The way, in my view, the Kanungu incident, that I was in Europe and North America for most of the week, was very accurate. In fact, much more accurate than the monitor of the new vision. Now, when I came back, I was disappointed that actually they had banned cameras <coughs> from the place. I mean, people need to know that the fact that there were cameras, the fact that there were first-hand accounts... Was good for us. Was good for us. And it's all nonsense to say that, oh, you know, it's given us bad publicity and what have you. No, come on, get off it. Those they want to spend $250,000 on it. Those people are smart enough. Oh, they got money in Barada. Yeah. hotels were full. So, so you the boys in the Kanungu sold the bananas. You lose nothing by allowing people to come and see for themselves the good or the bad, mm -hmm. and yeah. it helps. Rob, your good or bad event of the week? No, just just allow me, Patrick, to make an appeal. I don't even want a good or bad event. These Winnie's teams, Maggie, the president, I don't know who else does this job. Run to Zimbabwe to talk to the commercial farmers. Tell them we have a lot of land in Uganda. Buy the land, give it to them free of charge if it needs. Let them come and farm that here. Mugabe has deteriorated. Please. You know, I campaigned for him in the 70s <laughs> at university. We were sitting in no, fighting money for, him. For, for, for Rhodesia to go. become Zimbabwe, and the man has become a, a man does well dictator. If he doesn't need them, if he doesn't need them, let's bring them, let's bring them here. Uh, Tim, your good or bad event of the week? <laughs> oh my God! I that. <laughs> Actually, I think the good event was uh, in Parliament. It is it was recognised that when you have integrity, people fight for you, and a lot of people fought for Kanukaihora. It was very, very obvious that mm -hmm. uh, it's because they had integrity. None of us believed that he could have misused the funds. If it was somebody else, they would have had his name. Definitely. We would have named and, him. And uh, my bad event was the death of Professor Sekabunga. Now, Professor Sekamunga hails from Sese Island, from Sese Bukasa Island, where I hail from. And he happens to be, probably, to have been one of the best pediatric surgeons in this country. And then I learned recently that he was the first Ugandan to study medicine in England, at Guy's uh, Hospital. He died at the age of 70. And it is very, very, very sad loss to this country. Our condolences to him and his family. My bad event was just Mugabe as well. I mean, <laughs> I just could not. The man said he's going to kick out the white yeah, men. And, and he's, that he's, he's not wearing any fatigue. And that, that he, he escorted the police. The struggle which he has betrayed. I mean, please. He's like he, like he have been in 72 when he was pathetic. But you know, <coughs> you, know, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we're not very different from <laughs> Robert Mugabe. I mean, what's the difference between what Nadu is saying and what Mugabe is? Secondly, secondly, you see, the biggest fundamental problem that Mugabe has is the same problem that we have, and I saw a lot of politicians here have. They treat land not as a factor of production, but the land as a tribal land. And I saw a lot of politicians here the land business. Ladies, I've got to do the roundup. I must thank the Honorable Winnie Bianima, the Honorable Tim Luanga, Frank Katisini, Candid and Pretty Cross, and of course, the, land. the money on the land <laughs> and uh, Bob Kabishenga I must say thank you very much to all of you but also thanks to our sponsors Bell Lager get out there and support them buy a bell today I mean, after all they, after they, five only, only one no, <laughs> buy a bell at least today on my account and when you pop it open at least remember the gang <laughs> great weekend and also go to Bank Cafe and support them they, they brew great Ugandan coffee you should support them when you go there tell them you are buying because we said you should go out there and buy and, and remember Capital FM is going to be launching Rachel Magola's new CD. I tell you, I hear it's a cracker. You got to enter our competition because we're going to have 300 people in our garden. Africa will come and play. It's going to be an absolute sensation. Yeah. Listen, have a great week. And if you're trying to call me and my phone has been off uh, the last three weeks, don't worry. You can still get me. Cheers. Bye. This is the Capital Gang, brought to you by Uganda's finest premium beer, Bell Lager. When things are going well, when it comes to friends and fun, then Bell Lager for a great night and a good morning. A painful hay, 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 a painful hay.